Hi friends, welcome to my channel. I'm Arpita Karwa and in this video I'm going to talk about a short short way in which you can make a timetable to crack UGC net examination. Now guys we know that net is a very very tough exam. I would say it is one of the toughest exams of India and the syllabus is unbelievably extensive. Plus, you have a lot of pressure when you are sitting for this exam, mental, emotional, even financial pressure because most of the students who give this exam are of about 23, 24 years of age, they have cleared their masters and now are sitting for this exam. So they have a lot of financial pressure on themselves as well. So in this video, I'm going to talk about how you can make a timetable, a very simple one using which you can easily clear this exam. But before we talk about timetable, it is important to know why it is important to make a timetable. Frederick Nietzsche, a very famous French philosopher said that if you are sure of your why, then you can take care of any house in your life. And this is the reason why we are going to first talk about why timetable is important and only then we are going to look at how to make a timetable. So the very first thing is timetable helps you to solve the problem of chaos in your life. So most of the time what happens is when we start preparing for this exam, sometimes we don't feel that we are in the mood to study. Kai bar hume motivation nahi hota hai. Kai bar jo aaj timetable mein likha hai, wo padhne ki ichha nahi hoti hai. Now this is where timetable comes into the picture because when you have defined the timetable for the entire year then whether you like it or not you have to stick to it. So most of the students when I talk to them I find that they make a timetable in 20 minutes in 20 minutes. Now this is a very serious business people. You cannot create a timetable for entire year in just 20 minutes and for an exam as crucial as UGC net. So today in this video, I am going to talk about some important ways in which you can make a timetable that is sustainable and a timetable that requires a proper structure so that you cover the syllabus in parts and then by the time you reach the exam date, you are able to properly revise all the topics. So rather than making a timetable which is about Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday and you are fitting what all things you have to study, it is better than you make a timetable which is sustainable because if you have not read something on Monday, then on Tuesday you will have a double pressure of doing things that uh, you are supposed to do on Tuesday and also doing things that you have not done on Monday. So it is a very pressure related game. So to avoid that pressure, I am going to give you another method to make a timetable which will help you prepare for this exam in a stress-free manner. Now, to know how to make a timetable, you have to first self-analyze yourself. Even in Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna says to Arjun that you have to first understand yourself Arjun, only then you will be able to fight a war as important as Mahabharat. Similarly, you as an Arjun have to understand that what is your requirement, what kind of timetable are you aiming for. If you are a college going student, your timetable will be extremely different from a student who is not going to a college and just studying from home. If you are a homemaker, your timetable will be extremely different from someone who is going to a job and balancing UGC net preparation along with the job. So you have to figure out that what kind of requirement do you have? Are you a morning person or are you a night person? And then you have to finalize the number of hours you can devote on a daily basis to prepare for this exam. But guys, in all this, you don't have to lose focus. Alexander Graham Bell said a very important line. He said that when you concentrate all your thought upon the work at hand, that is the time when you can create wonders. The sun's rays do not burn until brought to a focus. Sun rays is everywhere in the earth, but when you put a lens uh, towards it and when you direct the rays towards a paper, then that paper starts burning. That is the power of focus. So analyze yourself and then decide the number of hours you are going to focus for this particular exam. In order to make a timetable, you have to first understand the 3M model which was actually laid out by Toyota. Now Howard has been a great follower of this model and this model is actually taught to MBA students in Harvard. So what is this Toyota way? 
Toyota, as we know, uh, is a Japanese company which makes car and they have a Japanese business model. I'm not here to promote Toyota car, but I'm here to tell you about the 3M model. Now, what are these three M's? The first M is Muda. Muda stands for wastefulness. Muda is a Japanese term which is translated as wastefulness in English. Now, wastefulness means topics that are 100% not going to be asked in the exam. So, you have to exclude all the topics from your timetable which are extremely wasteful, which will not come in the exam. For example, in case of UGC net exam, the first uh, topic that we start studying is Anglo-Saxon or Anglo-Normal period. Now, from this particular age, only one question is asked and that too sometimes. It is not a guarantee that every time a question like that will flash in the paper. So, this topic is going to come under the Muda category. It's a wasteful topic that you can exclude. You should not be studying. The second M is Mura. Mura means imbalance or inconsistency. Now, a lot of people have this habit of getting indulged in Mura. We always overestimate what we can do in one day and we always underestimate what we can do in 10 years. And this is the main principle of Mura. Imbalance. We will study for 20 hours one day and we are not going to study for three days in uh, sequence. What will happen? We are going to get into a state of imbalance or inconsistency. And that is what we have to avoid. We have to do things consistently. You have to ensure that if you are studying today for two hours, it is fine. You should be studying for two hours for the next consecutive all days. Studying for two hours is not a problem. Studying for 10 hours one day, not studying for 10 more days is a problem. So stay away from the issue of Mura. Understand and remember the age old saying, slow and steady wins the race. And now we come on to the third M that is Muri. Now what is Muri? Muri means overload. That means when you try to overload yourself so much, you cannot sustain that process for long. For example, you might start doing British literature uh, at one point in your day. Then you suddenly decide that you're also going to do paper one. And then you suddenly decide that you're also going to sit for a two hour mock. Now you overload yourself so much that you will not be able to sustain it. You will get tensed, you will get fatigued and then you might not be able to continue the process. So stay away from overloading yourself. Go slow and steady and follow the three M's of the Toyota model. Ye teen bimari jab hat jayegi, tab hum ek aisa timetable bana paayenge jo sustainable hoga. Okay, so that is very important. Why I am not talking about timetable right now? Why I am giving you so much context before I actually start giving you a timetable? Because vaccine tab kaam karegi jab actually bimari pata chale. So let us first understand what goes wrong with us. Only then we can understand how we can cure it. So till now in the video, I have actually told you that what is the problem that most of the students face. And now I'm going to take you to a model wherein I'm going to put forward in front of you how you can cure that problem. So now that we have understood the problem, let's get on to the solution. So we are going to talk about the Kanban model of making a timetable. Now, what is the Kanban model? It's a very, very easy model, which says that you have to divide any task of your life into three parts. Task to do, task that you are doing and task that are done. Now, what does it mean? That means anything that you have to do has to either be in one of these three categories. So, for example, there are 20 uh, chapters that you have to study for UGC net exam. Now you have to ensure that all the 20 chapters are further divided into topics and subtopics. So you end up making about a list of 100 subtopics that you have to study for the exam. Now all these 100 topics will first be in the category of to do because that is what you have to do. You have to start working on those topics, start reading, making notes, learning them. Now, every day you choose one or two topic from the to-do list and you put it in the doing category where you start doing those tasks. For example, you have chosen a topic like TSLUT from the subcategory. I'm talking about people who are studying for UGC net English. So you have chosen that topic uh, TSLUT. Now that topic 
goes from to do to doing list and in the doing list you start doing that topic so for example ts elliot takes two days for you to complete so for two days ts elliot remains in the doing section and once you have made notes you have learned it ts elliot moves to the done section and that is how you have to keep on doing things for each of the topic what generally we do is that we are going to put all the topics in the to do then we are going to take 10 topics from the to do we start working on it and we get so complicatedly involved in those topics that nothing goes out of the doing section to the done section so there is one topic which we have just covered 40 percent there's another topic which we have only covered 35 percent there's one topic which is on the finishing stage 90 percent but we are not completing it to the 100 percent and it doesn't move to the done list guys understand nothing is more satisfying than tick marks so ensure that every day you decide which topics you're going to pick from the to do section and move to the doing list so agar aaj aapko pata hai ki aapke paas 10 ghante hai so aapne ek topic liya from paper 1 that is teaching aptitude teaching aptitude ke andar bhi aapne ek sub topic liya maybe evaluation system and you know ki is topic ko complete karne mein meko 5 hours lagenge so aaj aapne us topic ko liya usko pura thoroughly study kiya use uske notes banaye use yaad kiya and today you move it to the done section and then you take another 5 hour topic work on it and then move it to the done section iske benefits kya hai the first benefit of Kanban technique is that you will be better organized. Aapko har din pata hoga kaun se topics aapke bache hain, kin topics pe aap kaam kar rahe hain aur kaun se topics aapne complete kar diye hain. Secondly, you will avoid burnouts. Aisa nahi hoga ki aap kisi din bohat pad rahe hain aur kisi din kam pad rahe hain. Aap roz apne liye kuch time decide karenge, us time aap kuch topics to do mein se lenge उन पे काम करना शुरू करेंगे इन केस वो खत्म नहीं होते हैं तो वो टॉपिक्स कल पे शिफ्ट होंगे कल पहले आप डूइंग के कैटेगरी में जो टॉपिक्स हैं उन्हें कंप्लीट करेंगे एंड देन यू आर गोइंग टू टेक एनी न्यू टॉपिक फ्रॉम द टू डू कैटेगरी द थर्ड बेनिफिट इज दैट इट इज वेरी वेरी इफेक्टिव आई एम टेलिंग यू दिस इज द मोस्ट इफेक्टिव टेक्निक दैट आई हैव एवर शेयर विद माई एस्पिरेंट्स एंड यू आर गोइंग टू सेंड मी अ थैंक यू कार्ड वंस यू स्टार्ट यूजिंग इट बिकॉज दिस इज as effective as something that you might not have used and you don't know how valuable it can be and number 4 you will be always aware of where you stand aapko roz pata hoga aapne apne syllabus ka kitna portion complete kar liya hai so that is what is going to give you satisfaction you will get away from the fear of unknown agar aapko pata hai ki aapko आपके पास में कुछ टॉपिक्स बचे हुए हैं जो 100 आवर्स लेते हैं और एग्जाम 30 दिन बाद है तो आप आज ही कैलकुलेट कर सकते हैं कि आपको 30 दिन कितने घंटे पढ़ने होंगे सो दैट यू कंप्लीट दीस टॉपिक्स एंड दैट इज हाउ यू आर गोइंग टू गेट सेटिस्फैक्शन तो जैसे जैसे आपके टॉपिक्स टू डू से डन की कैटेगरी में जाएंगे वैसे वैसे आपका कॉन्फिडेंस ऊपर होता जाएगा मोस्ट ऑफ द स्टूडेंट्स एग्जाम के दिन कॉन्फिडेंट इसलिए फील नहीं करते बिकॉज उनके टॉपिक्स डन में नहीं डूइंग में रहते हैं उन उन्होंने बहुत सारे टॉपिक्स पढ़े होते हैं बट किसी को भी कंप्लीटली खत्म नहीं किया होता है तो वो सारे टॉपिक्स डूइंग में कोई 50 परसेंट की स्टेज पे कोई 70 परसेंट की स्टेज पे कोई 93 परसेंट की स्टेज पे रहते हैं सो आई होप दैट दिस वीडियो will prove fruitful in your preparation journey if you're looking for any such more videos feel free to put that in the comment section below and i will be more than happy to address them in the next videos otherwise if you are looking for ugc net preparation material then please don't forget to go on and check out the website arpatakarwa.com we have courses related to paper 1 and paper 2 english literature we also have a special mock test series for people who are preparing for ugc net english those mock tests are divided into different units so once you complete a unit you should be giving a mock test and check how much you have completed that unit how confident do you feel after doing that unit so with that note i would like to take your leave that's it from my side for this lecture i'll meet you very soon in the next video lecture till the time i meet next happy learning keep loving literature and stay tuned to arpatakarwa.com